亚洲产业文化资产平台，也就是我们说的 ANI， 是一个亚太地区的跨国产业文化资产平台。这个平台呢，是以多边的交流、还有资讯共享、还有跨域协作作为精神跟目标。我们希望来推动文化资产区域性和主题性的国际交流合作。长期以来呢。Any， 我们盘点了亚洲产业文化资产的经典案例，还有名录，也梳理了亚洲产业文化资产的体系还有脉络，而这些学术资讯都可以在 Any 网网站上看到。此外，还有这个半年期的这个期刊，哦，提供专业的知识分享。每年度的这些论坛，我们也邀集了专家学者还有青年人呢、啊，齐聚一堂，大家共同来进行传承还有交流的活动。以及各式各样的讲座、推广的这些活动、啊，也都在这里发生。平时大家也可以关注 Any 的一些 Facebook， 还有 IG， 还有 Twitter， 我们可以了解到全球产业文化资产的最新趋势还有讯息。大家都了解到，现在是一个数位的时代，啊，每一个人呢都可以透过知识型的这个影片来做线上还有线下的自我学习。也因此呢 ，Any 的线上学习专区。我们希望用各种的影片，呃，以有趣而且容易了解的方式啊，拍出亚洲各国不同文化资产领域的这些佼佼者，还有研究学者他们多年的经验和成果，借由这些无远弗届的网络，把这些知识传播给更多的人，让大家更容易参与，而且乐于学习，让文化资产走进更多人的这个日常生活。我觉得这是一件非常美好的事情。安妮这一个系列的线上学习的影片呢，我们将介绍各式各样的产业文化资产，带领大家发掘我们身边的文化资产记忆，也带领大家来发现产业文化资产的这些历史，还有一些认同感，还有转型以及永续发展的世界趋势。我们会发觉，其实他们离我们并不遥远，他们就蕴藏在我们的工作、我们的经济发展和社会脉动当中。而文化资产的价值，还有文化资产的思维，其实就蕴藏在我们的生活之中。也因此，希望大家能在欣赏这些影片之后，能够有满满的收获，同时更关心我们生活周遭的文化资产。谢谢大家。三角埔发电所位于台北天母地区。那三角埔是天母地区的旧名，一九三一年完工，是全台第一也是唯一自来水发电的发电厂。三角埔发电所面积一百五十五平方公尺，为钢筋混凝土造房屋，内置有发电机、水车等设备。出入口另有一座面积二十七平方公尺的警卫室。整体建筑保存良好。于民国八十七年，三角埔发电所正式走入历史，并改为自来水加压站。那三角埔的地形与水自然资源，我们不得不提到草山水稻系统。草山水稻系统新建于一九二八年至一九三二年间，属台北水稻系统第二次扩张工程。一八九五年，后藤新平以卫生顾问来台，聘请英国技师威廉巴尔顿先生担任。专案技师来台进行卫生工程及水稻建设相关调查，并且设计二十八处都市水稻系统改善。日本在台的首要工作为改善自来水用水品质，并改进供水量不足的问题。当时日本人多方在阳明山勘察，找到三处水源，分别为阳明第一、第二及第三水源，主要考量水质洁净，不用再经过过滤设施。节省工程经费，尤其以阳山水源为表率。阳山水源标高为三百零三点六九公尺，三茂山为六百公尺。三茂山的地址是属于火城岩安山石。涌泉经过三茂山层层过滤后，水质洁净，富含矿物质，有蓝宝石水的美称。不用经过其他过滤程序，其实已经符合环保署公布的饮用水标准。由此可知，草山水稻系统是全台罕见的设施，保存完整。更重要的是，目前仍在使用中。因此，台北市政府在民国九十三年四月二十八日
把草山水稻系统公告为台北市第一百一十一号市定古迹。Hello and welcome at the Sanjiaopu Hydro Power Plant Historical Site. My name is Stefan Tkach and I'm an Associate Professor and the Chair of American University of Phnom Penh Department of Architecture. I've been researching Taiwanese hydro power plants since the year 2012 and I get the chance to visit every single unit on the island. Currently, I am leading the Slovak Taiwan Hydro Power Laboratory where besides the modern hydro power plants, we are also dealing with the historical sites just like the one on the back. San Jiao Pu uh, Hydro Power Plant was built in 1930, and basically between 1930 and 1931. Specifically, the construction started in uh, June 1930 and ended in January 31st, 1931. But the electricity started to be generated in April, the beginning of the April 1931. The reason for that is uh, basically the reason that we are using in the modern hydro power plants as well, and that is a testing period, which is about four months. Taking the case of a San Jiao Pu Hydro Power Plant, uh, what we immediately notice are the clear horizontal lines, which we can see on the uh, roof, eaves, or the monitor top. They are even emphasized by the river stones, right? So they are kind of darker. Even the, uh, the structure is a little bit more rough uh, in contrast to the rest of the walls. Uh, another thing are the issues with the geometry regarding the windows. Uh, there have been used uh, standard Japanese windows, which were used in uh, most of the buildings of that time. And they were either uh, sliding or flipping, specifically in case of the machinery room or the machinery hall, where we have the turbine and the generator, basically all the technology that was generating uh, a sufficient heat and it had to be ventilated those windows were actually flipped windows. Their purpose was to basically uh, direct the wind flow inside the building. When the air was heated up by the, the working technology inside, then it basically escaped through the roof, through the monitor top that we can see on the very top of the building. A really interesting parts about this, uh, this industrial building is the entire ventilation system. Uh, as we can see, every single window on the bottom has got these ventilation slots. They were literally sucking the cold air from the bottom and using the chimney effect of, again, the monitor roof to basically keep the air circulating within the building. So that was the only way how that time uh, a heavy machinery could be cooled. And we can see that thing in a lots of uh, industrial building, especially during the Japanese occupation period. Another quite interesting feature is the uh, asymmetric plan. Right? The machinery room as the main and the most important part of the building is in the center. However, multi-purpose room, which is the one over here with the shaft, the revision shaft, or the office that is uh, left side, uh, those are in an eccentric position. And the entire building is not facing east, which all of these elements were actually features of the second part of the Japanese occupation period. In a contrast to Uhechi Nagano's design of the presidential palace, or nowadays presidential palace, the Taiwan governor general, they were all facing east, as the resemblance to facing to Japan. This is a plate of San Jiao Pu Fadian Sewers. Now, there are a couple of interesting things about this plate. One of them, which you probably noticed, is that it is still painted in a it's kind of uh, camouflaged style. Now, uh, to make you understand why this still happens as a residuum uh, of the old era, is because most of the hydro power plants during the Japanese occupation period, especially the last part of this occupation period during the World War II, they were considered strategical objects, which means they were basically military strategical objects they were uh, supplying electricity or they basically their job was to generate electricity for most of the uh, essential equipments or including the cities. So basically every single hydro power plant, not only San Jiao Pu, were painted in a camouflaged style. So the aeroplanes won't simply see them from, from the air when they were you know, making their raids. We are currently in the machinery room of the San Jiao Pu hydro power plant. There are two industrial heritage elements. The first one is the hydropower turbine, right? And the second one is the hand-powered crane. Both of these elements are basically adjustable by a hand, which means uh, you don't need any electricity to adjust it. You don't need any hydro servo engines or anything else, which are actually in the modern hydropower houses. This hydropower turbine right, is actually coming from Japan, from the group Hitachi. 
The generator that was originally coupled over here is also from Hitachi. At the moment, the generator is somewhere in the Gongguan water treatment facility. In 1970, the uh, hydropower plant uh, simply ceased the operation and uh, the generator could also be turned into an electric motor, right? And in Gongguan pumping station, they actually needed a spare electric engine for the pump. So that's why it was actually shifted into uh, Gongguan. We have the turbine runner, right, which is inside the casing, right? We can actually hear it, that's a casing, it's made of steel. Then we have a shaft which actually connects the turbine with the generator. And there was most likely a flywheel over here to deal with the potential vibrations. At the same time, to helping to break the turbine, right? Or accelerate the turbine. There are two bearings, one over here and one on the right. This part and that part over there are basically dealing with the oil pressure. Because most of these elements over here, despite the fact that they are actually hand powered, they still go through hydraulics. Now, another thing is uh, the bearing, which is actually supplied by the, by the oil system because of the obvious reason it needs to be lubricated. So, and a Pelton turbine is a very specific turbine because it's dealing with the high heat and low flow volumes, right? Which means we need a, basically a high mountain and not that big stream of water, which is actually ideal for the case of a San Jiaopu hydropower plant because it was built on Caishan Waterwork. Caishan Waterwork in Taiwan was the second stage of a drinking water for a Taipei city. So basically what happens, we had the high heat, right? And a relatively, uh, a relatively small flow volumes, which is exactly ideal for this turbine, right? This turbine is called an impulse turbine, which means it has a two jets, one over here on the top, and another one is over here on the bottom. We can actually see these two pipes. So what happens is we had the inflow pipe coming right over here. There was a big valve that was protecting the turbine and regulating the flow of the water. And then it splits into two pipes, one over here and one over there. Inside, we have a needle, or in case of a larger turbine, we call it a spear. And uh, on another side, we had actually a system that was uh, governing these spears. Basically what happens is that the spear moved inward and outward. We can actually see the system over here, right? There is a lever. And the moment the spear goes out, Basically, the water jet right, was stronger. The moment it gets inside, the opening was blocked, and basically there was no water coming into the turbine, so the turbine was not working, right? But basically, you stopped the turbine, right? Now, how this runner look like? A Pelton runner is a very specific runner that was designed somewhere in the 1870s, right? Which is actually a, an incredibly old technology, if you think about it, right? It was designed based on a standard water wheel that we are actually still seeing somewhere around the Taiwan, right? For like pumping the water or for the agricultural purposes. So the Pelton runner is, let's say, a modification of this uh, standard water wheel. Now what happens is that it has, instead of these kind of small paddles, it has uh, buckets, right? And anytime, anytime the water jet basically hits the bucket, the turbine turns, right? That's why it is called the impulse turbine, because every single time uh, the jet hits the turbine, it actually gives the energy of the water and then the turbine turns, so basically it was the, the impulse, right? And then you got another bucket coming in and you had the second impulse, right? And that's how the turbine actually turns. The problem with the impulse turbines is that sometimes they have a vibrations, right? They came to a really uh, steady vibrations, however, they are not really good for the generator and that was the reason why the flywheel was over here, probably connected between the generator and uh, between the turbine, right? All connected by the shaft. Let's uh, look at the bottom of the turbine, right? The Pelton turbine technology is actually an open technology, which means one can go under the turbine and actually still see the wheel, right? So in theory, if we go under the turbine right now, we will probably see the Pelton runner still, you know, kind of being over there. Another thing that I forget to mention is that inside this jet over here, right, we have a spear and then at the end of the, the tip of the spear, there is a deflector which engages all the time when you basically turn the turbine off. This is to protect the wheel, this is to protect the spear, right? So basically it, it actually closes the spear and protects the tip. Now, how the spear was governed? We call this thing a governor, right? Which is over here, this, this shaft that was most likely connected to a flywheel, right? As a kind of a brake, right, connection. Unfortunately, we don't have a flywheel over here, so you can clearly see that it was actually cut off, right? It was cut off, but you can still see the connector over here, right? So there was a secondary shaft or something else over here. 
All right, now this is the governor wheel, right? And the reason why it is so big is because through the uh, transmission, right, through these handles over here and over here, it was actually dealing with the uh, dimension spears, right? So basically the moment you turn the wheel, the spears goes in or out, or in other words, you are basically regulating the revolution of the turbine. Usually when you kind of turn it towards yourself, right, you will basically breaking the turbine, you are closing the water flow. If you are turning it away from yourself, right, then you are actually speeding up the turbine. In this case, we have the hydropower turbine that is actually designed on the uh, drinking water pipeline, which is the only case in Taiwan that we have. We don't have any other turbines, as far as I know, that's been designed on the freshwater pipeline. This is the second bearing or the end bearing. There was nothing else over here, right? So this is where the shaft that was connecting the turbine, flywheel and the generator ends, right? As you can see, this is the oil pipeline connecting the uh, bearing with the oil pressure systems, right? The lubricating and once it is uh, turning, so it's smoothly turning. Now this is the main valve. Once we turn it off, Basically, there was uh, no water coming into the turbine and you can maintain the turbine. You can actually go underneath the turbine and check the turbine from the bottom, check the turbine from the top. You can basically disassemble the whole system. You were protected. And then we have the second valve over here, which was the valve that was basically breaking the turbine, right? The moment you basically close it, you break the turbine. You will basically stop the turbine from spinning. So this was the way to open it, right? And this was the way to close it. This is a pressure gouge, which is one of the most important part in the Pelton runner uh, or any kind of hydropower turbine. And basically what it does is, uh, in this particular scenario, it is telling us the pressure of the water that was actually hitting the individual buckets of the Pelton runner. Right? So basically the higher pressure we had, the faster the runner would be spinning. And with the help of the governor, we can actually uh, govern the speed, govern the revolution of the turbine. Part of the Sanjiapu hydro power plant was also the switchyard. Uh, electricity that was generated in the powerhouse went through a switchyard and then originally it was supplying the Gongguan probably pumping station because that's where the electricity was needed. Obviously right now the switchyard is not over here, but what we know from the historical pictures is that the switchyard was actually consist of uh, three plus one transformers. So one transformers were basically a spare transformer that was used when you know something happens with the, those three or basically you had to kind of switch them or you, you simply want to maintain them. The problem with the electricity that was generated over here at this space and that was delivered to Gongguan was that you had to actually use the power lines that were quite long. Now these power lines, uh, that time, that means in 1930s, they actually had a lots of loses, right? So there were lots of loses and they were not really economic. So what happens after a certain period, power from the Sanjiapu hydro power plant was basically switched directly to Tianwu area, or formerly known as Sanjiapu, hence the name of the powerhouse. Now 再放流给民众一起来参与